Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, we're going to take a look at how you add distributed Ethernet Flex I.O. to a Control Logix system. Now, um, as you can see behind me, let me step to the side here, uh, you can see I've been doing a lot of work here over in Studio B on our demo wall here, and uh, it's not finished. I still have to do the Data Highway Plus, still have to do the Data Highway 45, and I gotta I go up into the attic and find my device net cabling. I, I started a lot of stuff when I renovated the office. I haven't brought it all back down yet. So uh, hopefully over the coming shows, we'll be able to get this all running and working. And I'm kind of excited because there's so many different things we can do with this setup. But with that said, um, specifically what we're gonna work on, and I actually have the overhead cam pointing to it, is the Flex IO. We're gonna integrate that into our existing program where we integrated the Point IO in the uh, both on Ethernet and on ControlNet. So now we're going to do Flex IO. And this, if you see in the overhead cam, this uh, Flex IO adapter, this Ethernet adapter, it's the original uh, one, which you have to set through boot, boot uh, <laughs> which you have to set through boot P DHCP because it doesn't have that uh, the pinwheels on the front where you can actually set the last octet. Now we have another video in the, that we've already done in the past. I think it was on the Automation Minute where we showed you how to set uh, addresses via BoopP. So we're not going to do that again. And, you know, I was a little nervous on this. I'm like, well, how do you reset it? But, you know, it came up, you know, broadcasting on BoopP. So it wasn't really an issue after all. But in any case, um, it already has an IP address. And we're going to try to get it working just like the Point .io where it's using, you know, doing the blinking of the lights. Now, this particular one does not have the wiring from the inputs to the outputs. So um, we'll only see the lights come on on the outputs. But with that said, uh, that is what we're going to do tonight. Now, a couple things here. Um, first of all, while I'd love to get that PLC5 eventually up and running, um, I don't have a copy of RS Logics 5. I had in the past gotten a, a temporary activation from my local distributor. And I just don't want to keep hounding them for temporaries. And you're only supposed to be able to get one. You know, it's kind of supposed to be a kind of a one-time deal for per product. So I've reached out to all my connections to see if somebody, um, you know, has a copy that they're not using anymore. You know, maybe they pulled out all their PLC fives and they're not using it anymore. And uh, so uh, with that in mind, if we can get a copy donated to the show and the blog, then we'll be able to uh, integrate the PLC five with all these other PLCs. But uh, if not, um, we just won't. You know, I. Uh, uh, I tried to get a toolkit from Rockwell. They have a nice $1,500 and another $2,500 toolkit, which have all the PLC and HMI stuff in it, but uh, they said I didn't qualify for them. So we're looking for that donation. If we don't get it, we just won't uh, cover it on the blog and the show. That's, uh, you know, we can't, uh, I think the list price is $12,000, um, or it's a $1,000 adder if you have some other uh, uh, contract, but for our free blogs and shows, we're not gonna we're not gonna uh, spend all kinds of money to uh, to work with legacy stuff. So, but I got my fingers crossed. I've had seven nice people reach out to me on LinkedIn saying they may be able to transfer a license to me. So we'll see how that goes. But with that said, the only other news I have before we get into this is that uh, this is the last month where you can get my Compact Logix course on sale. So if you know anybody who needs Compact Logix training, they can save twenty. I think it's twenty or twenty five percent by going to theautomationschool.com and picking it up now for $119. Or well, October 1st, it'll go up to $150. As uh, you know, we invested a lot to actually film the course, so we have to actually start, you know, producing a small profit to start paying the bank back for the money we borrowed to, uh, to buy all that equipment. So with that said, um, let's go ahead and get into doing this. And I'll come over here to the computer. And this, uh, you can see right here, I already have... Um, the program up from the last show here and you can see I have the point IO here and here and uh, you know one question I had is can I add this online right can you add flex IO online you can add 56 IO online I'm told but can you add flex and that that's a feature I believe came out in version 15 we actually have a blog over at the automationblog.com all about that so um, and you know I should point out too we're looking for freelance writers we're looking to get some regular either weekly or monthly contributors to write for the automation blog. So if you're interested, check that out over at the uh, automationblog.com. Just go to theautomationblog.com forward slash guests. 
and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about there. And uh, we are paying our freelancers to write for us. Uh, with that said, let's see if we can add this Flex.io online. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on Ethernet and I'm going to do discover. Okay. And I got everything else off. I got everything in Studio A off. I got almost everything behind me off. And you can see Pono is already in the project, so nothing to do there. But the Flex.io on Ethernet cannot be added online. So we can't do that. And another way you can see that is if we come over here and do new module and I type in uh, 17, whoops, 1794, you see, they're all grayed out. Now, if I had some of that nifty new uh, 5094 stuff, right? Is it 5094? Right? That, well, why doesn't it show here? Well, first of all, if I had some, which I don't, um, that can be added online, even with the 5380. But uh, this is version 20 because I'm using an L63. I got the L7 over there in Studio uh, Studio A for the for the courses. So uh, the L63, uh, you know, in version 20, I have no idea what that is. But that could be added online as well as 1756. You'll see none of this is grayed out. Well, the fiber one is, but you can see the EMBTs, the ENETs, the EWEBs, they're not grayed out, EN2s. So you could add that online if you wanted to. And, and VFDs as well. So in any case, let's go ahead and close that and uh, let's go offline. So I'm going to go ahead and go offline and I'm going to go ahead and save. And now let's do a file save as here and change the name. And I thought it was uh, point IO and then we'll do flex IO as well. And uh, we'll do here, we'll do EC for Ethernet Control Net, and here we'll just do E. So I don't remember what the name of the last program was, but uh, with all these programs, I'll put them up at the automationblog.com if you want to download them. If you're a uh, supporter, if you join the automation blog for a dollar or more a month at uh, Patreon, you can get a copy of this for free. Um, we like to reward our supporters who keep the blog open. Everything on the blog, all the articles are free, no charge. And uh, the downloads, we get charged a little bit uh, for hosting costs, costs on those. So if you support the blog, we like to make those available free. So let me go ahead and save that. All right, excellent. So now we're offline. We saved it as a new name. Let's come in here, right click new module. And let's put in our 1794. And this is an AENT. You know what? Let me pull up RS links. And let's see what version this guy is here. Most of the stuff is off. All right. I believe it's this guy here. Okay. So that's not the one. It must be this one, 95. So let me, uh, let me just open that up. Well, it only has two modules. That one has eight. So this is definitely it. So let's go to device properties. And here we can see this is a version 3001. Let me let the Ethernet browse to here just to verify that this is here and this one is not. Yeah, you know what? Now I look at this part number, that's actually the Flex Logics, which is also off. Okay, so good to go. So we know what it is. So let's do an AENT. And let's match up. No, it's not a V4, it is a V3. And Rec Optimize, we only have two modules. Excellent. Okay. Its address was, what do we say? 95. And you have to give it a name. So we'll call it, what do we call other ones? We called, let's see, the one was called CPIO and EPIO. So we'll call this EFIO for Ethernet Flex IO. How's that? And I think that's it. All right. So here it is. Now let's just go ahead and add our modules to it. And if I remember correctly, I have an IB16 and an, let's just take a look here. Okay. IB16, let's see what version she's at. 1, 101, and an OB, I believe. 101. Excellent. Okay. So let's come back here and do IB16. Create. Rev 1, that's great. Everything's great. Slot 0, that's the first slot. Unlike Point IO, Flex IO starts at slot 0. We don't have to name the module, so we'll just click on OK there. 
And now I want the OB. OB 16, there we go. Create. Everything looks good. Excellent. All right. So let's go ahead and download that and see if it works. So we'll do uh, communications. I already have a path here. So we'll do communications download, download it to the L63, I believe it is. Yep, L63, yep, series B. And I'll just take a moment to download. And then, okay, change it back to run, yes, please. Let's see if I can see uh, everything's looking green. Let's take a look. IO light is solid on the controller, that's great. It's also, we can see it here in the software too. Um, so look, no yellow triangles, everything's looking good. If I were to, let's say, unplug it, right, we can see that uh, network status error up there on the module itself. And then here in the software, we can see the IO light uh, blinking and we can see the yellow triangles here in the software. And this would be one of those uh, connection timeout issues. Let's see. Connection request error. Connection requested timed out. Okay, so let's plug it back in. There we go. Should come up pretty quick. Okay, just give it a minute. Connecting. Just give it a, usually I say 10 to 20 seconds and they come back up. There it goes. It's back. Now let's see if we can change that. I've had issues. I'm still running. I think this is 20.05. I've had some crashing issues with it. So we'll uh, we'll see if we can do an online edit here. And let me uh, add a branch level. And this is usually where it crashes if I try to drag and drop. Oh, we're lucky so far. And now let me change. We call the E flex IO. We want the outputs in slot one. And that's an int. Let's just select that whole thing. Okay. Let's uh, walk through the accept to see if I have any errors. Now I'll test it. And let's see. Hmm. I don't see any lights. Slot one output. Shouldn't that give us, shouldn't that give us lights? Let's go ahead and complete our edits here. And why, 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 why? Let's go to the controller tags and we'll look at our Ethernet Flex IO outputs for slot one. Okay. They're changing. But oh, <laughs> it looks like I don't have the jumpers on the terminal block jumping power over to the output card. So let me put those in and I will be right back. And there it goes. Look at that. So we did everything correctly. That's awesome. So now we have our Flex IO on Ethernet integrated into our uh, Control Logics program, into RS Logix 5000 version 20. And uh, if you're doing Studio 5000, it's the same exact process. And with that, that's the end of this show. Next time, we'll probably work on doing the Control Net Flex IO, which is very similar, except for the you have to schedule the Control Net. But uh, with that, that's the end of this episode. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, remember, if you'd like to uh, help support the show and the blog, you can do so over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And also, keep in mind, we're looking for uh, freelance writers for the automation blog, as well as instructors for the automation school. So if you're interested in doing either, get in touch with me. There's a contact link over at theautomationblog.com. You can click just to get directly in contact with me. And with that, I hope everybody has a great week. Until next time, peace.